Oh, hello. Please don't laugh. I'm having a terrible time, and this cart isn't even a half of it. Though you look rather experienced. Maybe it's fortuitous that you came along. You might be just the right person to help me. You've heard about Dragon Mounds, right? They're ancient dragon burial sites. Centuries old. The Dragon War, the Dragon Cult. I'm over-explaining. The job is simple. I just need some charcoal rubbings from those mounds. I intended to. I hired this cart and everything. But as you can see, that didn't work out. Maybe I was foolish to try and do this on my own. I don't have a lot of field experience. Almost none. But you! You could handle this, right? I'll pay you. Thank you for helping. It's a big relief. I need rubbings from two dragon mounds. One south of here, and another off to the east. I'm particularly interested in any symbols that look like dragons. But anything you find will help. Oh, you should read Historia Draconis. The writer was an eyewitness. Very briefly, in ancient times, dragon priests and the dragons ruled over the Nords. Unless you join the dragon cult. Right. The Nords revolted. A few dragons even fought against their own kind. The texts say thousands on thousands of Nords died, but I think that's exaggerated. Eventually, they defeated the dragon priests and their dragons. We're still sorting that out. The Historia claims the Nords killed them all, but it's biased. Some scholars think the cultists sacrificed themselves to become Draugr. That way, they could protect the dragons and priests buried in the mounds. Oh, that's easy. Most of the burial sites are still buried and therefore inaccessible. These two happen to be at the surface and may have the rubbings I need. If my research is correct, of course. There's more, but let's start with this, at least. I really don't know. I've never really done research in the field before. I plan to go in armed to the teeth, just in case. A lot of good that did me. I bought all this adventuring gear and have nothing to show for it. Oh, you should...
You're back! I'm so glad to see you. I hope it wasn't too dangerous. I feel like I should have gone with you, but I probably would have slowed you down. Oh, the rubbings! Did you get them? How exciting! I can't believe I get to examine these myself! Field work is wonderful! Now, I just have to hope they confirm my theory. Well, the glyphs here are definitely Marithic era, with Nord inclusions that have... Sorry, I'll skip all that. These symbols resemble those on dragon cult tablets. I think they're charms that speed up the release of the dragons from their mounds. Well, something like that. It happened in elsewhere, didn't it? Now that I have these, there's one final mound to investigate. I have to physically go there this time. Would you still be willing to help me? I'm not sure I can do this alone. There's a dragon mound farther down the road. A big one. When I first entertained this theory, I made a warding spell. One that should seal whatever's inside permanently. It's difficult to cast, however. I... It certainly happened in elsewhere, didn't it? Everyone thought dragons were gone for good, and now the giant lizards are burning villages. Is that what happens if I do nothing? You were? Then you saw what they did! Is it so unlikely it could happen here? And I have so many questions to ask you, but later. I wasn't sure about this last part. I needed the rubbings to know. Besides, if I said I needed you to maybe help me cast a spell to seal up a dead dragon, you'd think that was ridiculous. Everyone else does, especially my mentors. Sure? No. But what if I... Yeah! I've made it this far with no catastrophes. That has to count for something, right? Is the area safe? I'm so nervous. Oh, right, of course. You're the one who knows what to do. I brought my dagger in case there are giant bugs or something. I've never stabbed a giant bug before. Is it as icky as it sounds? <laughs> Wonderful. So those tales about being dragged into caves and devoured by frostbite spiders are just stories to make children behave? Don't answer or you'll scare me out of doing this. 
Lead on to the mound. Sensing any strange energies. I don't know if that's good or bad. Are you ready to head inside? We need to go to the center of the mound. That's the best place for my spell. Here we go. Everything's fine. I'm not panicking. There. Oh, it worked. At least I think it worked. No rumblings, no explosions. So that's promising. But that spell took a lot out of me. Could you help me out of here? Maybe. Let's hurry. I don't want to linger here. Here we are. Entirely uneaten. Oh, thank you for your help. I had no idea field work was so invigorating. I can't wait to tell my peers at the Antiquarian Circle all about it. Oh, really? I'm very new, our latest member. I only joined recently. Anyway, this is wonderful. Imagine the coincidence of my asking you, a fellow member, for help out here. Well, not exactly. Gabrielle made her skepticism quite clear. Is she always that blunt? She told me I could gather information as long as I didn't get directly involved. But I wanted to prove myself to the Circle. I hope I'm not in trouble. No! I mean, I don't think so. I took the initiative to deal with something that could be a big threat. That counts for something, right? I have to explain my findings to Gabrielle, and I promise to pay you. So meet me at the Circle. Wolves of ice and bone attacked Brune, my lady, and he saw ghosts. Ghosts? Nonsense. Get him to the inn and I'll do what I can. Come on, let's warm you up. 
the rubes and oaks that reside in this town see spooks under every fish barrel. Normal animal attacks become works of supreme evil in their minds. My husband and I have too much on our plate to spend time investigating every wolf bite. I couldn't get much out of Groom, but it seems wolves attacked Havel's farm over to the west. He claims the beasts were only bones and covered in ice. I'm not inclined to believe him. People here tend to view the truth through their mead. Wolf packs do roam around the outskirts of town. Occasionally they snatch away a chicken or a goat. But attacking groups of people is unusual. Tell you what, could you go to the farm and get the truth? There would be coin in it for you. Excellent. The people of Mortal are basically good. They just let their imaginations run wild. Learning the truth of this attack could help curb any future issues with the wolves. I'll check on Brune at the tavern. His shivering concerns me. Oh, one can't live in this world without encountering a stray specter. Seeing chains drop from the sky changes what we accept as normal. And magic impacts all our lives, of course. Let's say I'm skeptical. The people of Morthal spend their days fishing, cutting logs, and drinking. They don't leave town, and outsiders don't visit. Spreading wild tales is what passes for entertainment here. Last week, Bandor accused Invisible Reeker of stealing his beard comb. The mill ceased operation completely while the town searched for holes in the ground where they might be hiding. We found it in the stables where he'd been grooming the horses. Indeed, I am proud to call him my husband. Without his strength, this town would certainly fall apart. When I arrived in Mordor for our wedding, I believed my life was over. But Red Harden made us a fine home here, for which I am grateful. Gods, no. I hoped my diction would show that. Perhaps I've lived here long enough to adopt their backwards speech. I came from Solitude originally. My father was a wealthy merchant who needed access to Mortal's lumber. Thus, my wedding. The favorite part of coming to this inn is the strangers trying to talk to me. It's great. Never gets old. What do you want? Glad to hear Erof is still above ground. I thought his obsession had finally killed him. Yeah, I saw the Pell Man. My sister and I were ranging far north of Solitude, out along the coast. That night, we made camp with a plan to head back at dawn. Late after I fell asleep, Merlith's scream woke me. I rushed out of the tent and saw it stalking away, carrying her. She was... her neck was twisted, backward. I gave chase, but it was quick, slipped into the shadows without a trail. Taller than any man I've seen, but thin, like a drogger. So I know it wasn't a giant. And paler than a belly of a cave fish. Look, Merlith and I never really liked each other. So I don't care if you find it. But hopefully this helps Erof. I've known old Erof for a long time. I thought he was frost-touched. But I was wrong. That thing, whatever it is, is real. And it murdered my sister. 
I wonder how many other old stories that I ignored over the years are true. He used to frequent the Inns of Solitude, begging for someone to join his hunt. Just another madman, we thought. Maybe if I'd listened to him back then, we could have found the Pale Man together. Then Merleth would still be alive. Zombies get you. Are you mad? Don't step foot anywhere near that farm. Those bone wolves will rip you apart limb from limb. They turned everyone there into zombies. By Moloch's nethers, what else would you call them? Felt like just a normal day of working the field. Then a freak storm blows in. Heard whispers on the wind, and saw a woman's ghost in the snow. That's when the anyone brought down by wolves turned. Their skin shriveled and froze before my eyes. But then they attacked me. People I've known for years. Havel, the guy who owns the farm, holed up in the house. Could you check on him? I'm worried for his safety. Still think you're mad, but I appreciate that you're willing to check on Havel. He's a grumpy old coot, but he doesn't deserve whatever this is. You'll need a key to the house. One of the farmhands should have one, if you can take it from them. When those bone wolves came out of the storm, we scattered. Some people tried to defend themselves with rakes, but we're farmers, not warriors. Other than myself and maybe Havel, I don't know who else is still alive. Brune's still alive? One of those tusking wolves latched onto his leg, but that didn't slow him down. He fended it off with a hammer and kept running. If he can make it to town, maybe I can as well. Thanks for letting me know. They started off faint, like a low murmur. As the storm grew, we could make out words and laughter, like from a child. Then we saw the spirit in the storm, a young woman running toward us through the field. I've never been so scared. The spirit faded before reaching us. I thought perhaps the storm had played tricks on my eyes. But the shocked look on Havel's face, it seemed like he recognized her. Before I could ask him, the wolves attacked. that you came to eat me you better turn right around ah. what are you doing in my house first all my workers rot away into monsters because of frozen skeleton wolves and now strangers are traipsing about my home you saw those creatures in the field if I leave they'll make me like them I have all I need in here to hold out until they are gone Besides, I'm not ready to see who's waiting for me out there again. I saw the spirit of someone we thought disappeared years ago. The Jarl and Lady's daughter, Freywin. They never talk about it. Too painful, I suppose. I guess she died if that's her ghost who brought these cursed wolves on us. Hmm. 
No clue why she'd bring this upon us. Freywin always loved visiting the farm. Actually, there's someone who might know about Freywin's fate. A clever woman who speaks with spirits named Old Yolen. Perhaps you could ask her to help fix all this. Her hut lies to the northeast. She is a strange one for sure. Always stealing my chickens for her unnatural magics. But she's the only one who understands the ways of ghosts. In the meantime, I'm going to stay right here until this all blows over. Oh yes, even as a little girl, she'd wander out here on her own. Always giggled about chasing the chickens around the field. Eventually, Lady Ninetha would arrive to bring her home, apologizing for the disruption. But I never minded. It was nice. Well, I heard things. Morthal is a small town, and people talk. Stuff about evil wizards kidnapping her. But I keep to myself and focus on the farm. No time for storybook tales. That old witch makes my skin crawl. Using chicken bones and blood for magic is unnatural. Anyone who works with Shaw's power should be watched closely. But they say she talks to spirits. Might be helpful than convincing Fravens' ghost to leave. Of course, my dear. Go ahead and grab some seed. Another traveler approaches. Come, warm yourself. Visitors come so rarely to visit this old woman, but fate has a way of making one suddenly useful. Well, get close to the fire. Warm up. Pose your question. Wondered when they would send someone. Zone outsider surprises me. Yes, I know the fleshless fools. But the ghost of young Freywin? Disturbing. I may have answers for this haunting, but I'll need cursed specimens to study. You will get them. Blood and tissue. Tear some decayed skin off an affected person and scrape dried blood from a cursed wolf. Bring me these things so I can understand what kind of magic we're dealing with. I fear there is more to Freywin's haunting than we realize. Good. Go on. Return here when you have the samples. A simple ritual will provide the details we seek. In the meantime, I'll consult my notes about Freywin's disappearance. Because I'm smarter than most Nords? 
I just... People from the north fear magic. Don't understand it? Must be dangerous. They believe my power comes from that trickster sure. If he was so clever, then I must be too. At least as Nord see it. Out of sight, out of mind. The fools believe they can ward off magic's consequences by pushing it away. And yet I'm the first person they visit when someone gets sick, or they think they see Daedra. I did. She was beloved by the whole town. Even those of us pushed to the edges. Her disappearance hit hard. And the circumstances... Well... No, no, I will not tell you what is not yours to know. At least until I can see what causes these attacks. Now where did I put those rune stones? Such sloppy magic. Untrained. The scent of death enters my nose. Your time with the cursed creatures has marked you. Let's hope not permanently. While you hunted, my studies proved fruitful. Do you have the blood and skin I require? They will complete my understanding. Yes, these will do nicely. Fresh, intact, thrumming with magic. This shall make the ritual easy. Hmm, they have an icy burn to the touch. Hope they weren't too much trouble. Perhaps those walking corpses willingly gave up their skin? <laughs> Many things. Is this a spell or a curse? Where does it get its power? Magic holds unique patterns, like footprints in the snow. If it's known to me, perhaps you can track the source. But first, I must extract this knowledge. Good. I won't be but a moment. Just as I feared. Come, listen to a tale. Ritual bears out my fears. I recognize the curse corrupting life around Morthal. Years ago, a death mage named Maxton killed a group of town guards at Kjensteg Ruins. The same magic she used then now animates these undead. All I know are whispers. They say Maxton kidnapped Freewin and forced her into the ruins. Naturally, the Jarl dispatched the guards to rescue his daughter. But just as they arrived, a tempest of ice arose that froze the soldiers where they stood. Vanished. Until now, it seems. 
though the link between Freywind's ghost and this curse still remains unclear. To find a cure, I need Maxton's original spell. Go east to the ruins. Retrieve anything that could reveal the nature of her work. Good. Meet me in Warthal with what you find. I wish to examine the wounds made by these undead. And take this rune. It bears an enchantment that will ward you from the curse's worst effects. At least, as I said, she was a conjurer of death. From what I have seen, her magical understanding is incomplete. This curse is wild and sloppy. I never spoke with her, but rumors still sometimes drift into my camp. Maxton was a mystery in Morthal. Appeared late. Oh, a forest night stroll is not so odd for a mage. It's the best time to collect mushrooms. And dug up bones hold the most power in the moonlight. This I don't know. Let us hope that whatever you find in the... Interesting. Even as a child, Freywin wandered outside Morthal to visit her people. She would come to my hut without fear. I... An excellent question. So many... A simple stone imbued with the warmth of life. After the events at Kianstag ruins, I explored new paths. Do you doubt my ability? My practice of magic extends back to when I first heard Shore's whispers as a child. Have faith when I say the ruin will protect you. And if it doesn't, well then, I'll visit your frozen statue. <laughs> a shame, but no. We require something much more powerful to undo magic this strong. wrong absolutely i've researched this ritual for years i just need your help
why you're following me. Who are you? And why do you pursue me? First at Hallow's Farm, and now you emerge unscathed from these accursed ruins. Maxton sent you to bring me back to her. I won't go. Everyone should just stay away before I kill them as well. No, I still live. For now, the curse I carry will kill me soon enough. I only hope to die close to home. I didn't want to destroy any more lives, or watch memories from my life resurrected to taunt me. Its power grows as it feeds off my life energy. The curse ends once I am gone. I only wish I could say goodbye to my parents. I know it is not my place to ask favors, but could you bring my mother a message? Tell her, I'm sorry for everything. Thank you, stranger. Please, bring her this locket, so she knows the message is from me. Tell mother not to worry. There's a place I love nearby, where I can watch the good people of Morthal live their lives. I can be happy there in my final moments. Oh yes, she was. I loved her dearly, and I truly believe Maxton loved me back. When she realized she'd accidentally cursed me, she swore to find a cure. But as time went on, growing her necromantic power became her only interest. I wish this news surprised me. After I left to come home, I feared Maxton would no longer reign in her desire for power. Her ambition attracted me when we first met. Over to Is that what they say? No. I willingly joined her ritual, which makes me just as guilty for all this death. Maybe I should... This was not what she planned. Maxton believed she could improve her magical ability by communing with the powerful spirits that inhabit Kienstag ruins. She asked my help with performing a summoning ritual, but it went horribly wrong. Maxton misjudged the ritual's difficulty. As she struggled, ice grew over the walls, and winds blew wildly. She almost... It shames me to admit, but yes, all those soldiers, my friends and neighbors, dead. Can you help him, Rich? The curse rots his flesh. I've done what I can, but it won't last. Good, you're back. Old Miolin told me of your discovery at the farm. She believes that Freywin's ghost somehow heralds this curse. I held out hope of her survival for years, perhaps finally knowing her fate brings some relief despite it all. Still, alive? I can't believe it. After all these years, Freywin finally comes home and you tell me she's dying? Why would she have you deliver this locket? I must see her. There is so much to say. Where is she? Take me to her. Is that by the water where the boats dock? Or perhaps her bedroom where she watched people from the window. 
The tree. Oh, Freywin, that old tree in the forest above Morthor. She would spend hours there. We must go now. But you survived. Oh, the clever woman protected you. Speak with old Njolin, please. She knows so much more about magic than anyone in Morthal. There must be something that can cure my daughter. Thank you. I need a moment to process everything you told me. And hold on to the locket. I'd refuse to take it while there's still hope to keep Freywin alive. So you found Freywin alive, did you? An unexpected but welcome turn of events. We may yet be able to save her. What did you bring me from the ruins? I must know more about the necromancer's plans. Uh, let me see. Awful? The fantasies of a child. Playing with magic like this invites danger. The energies at the ruins surely overwhelmed her. But this shard. Tell me, did Freywin explain the visions of her ghost to you? Yes, this is what I needed to know. Maxton's ritual consumed the spirits in the ruins. She wished to gain power by absorbing their memories. Freywin's curse drains her life energy, then manifests it as her own memories. This is how we cure her. By flooding her with her own life force, we can burn out the curse. Give me her locket. Ah, yes. It hums with emotional power. Once attuned, you can absorb Freywind's memories into it. Fill it with her energy so we may rescue her from death. Good. Here is the locket. Nanetha mentioned two places Freywin enjoyed. The docks and her bedroom. You may find manifestations there. When you're done, meet me back here at the tavern. Then we'll proceed. Ah, well, you see, back in the... <laughs> Actually, no. Perhaps that secret should fade into dust. These events show that those ruins best remain undisturbed. I don't think Brune would still be alive without old Mjolin's help. She keeps knitting me. exploring. I can't wait to do it again.
quickly to me. Our time is short. Your return may be too late. Lady Nenetha ran off to meet Freywen at the trees she described. She wanted to be with her before the end. If we don't act quickly, she will die. Were you successful in obtaining the memories? Then we can put an end to this tragedy. But we must act now. Go, join them at the large tree overlooking Morthal to the east. I will meet you after I prepare. Bring it with you. As my ritual to cure Freywin culminates, you must hold the locket before you. Her life energy will rush into her, and the curse should break. I warn you, this may be painful for her, but it is necessary. When you arrive, wait for me. Do not let them do anything rash. I will not be long. Do this, and Morthal will be rid of this curse forever. Now hurry! Mother, you can't be here. It will kill you. Freywin, I thought you died. I can't leave you, even if it kills me. It's already killing you. Please, get away from me. Mother, no! Nineta? Oh no, we must act quickly. Use the necklace on my command. Ah, it burns! Mother! Hurry, use the necklace. Release the energy within. my Freywin back to me. Thank you. I have so many questions for her. And the Jarl, he still doesn't even know. We must... <laughs> Please, give me a moment. I think so. I could feel my skin freeze over. For a brief moment, I thought the end was upon me. All I wanted was for Freywin to know she wasn't alone. I don't know, truly. Freywin's return will raise many questions in Morthal. The Jarl and I must discuss what to say if we say anything at all about what happened here. I promised you payment at the beginning of this. Here, I am deeply grateful. My skin, it's no longer blue. <laughs> My heart, I can feel it beating again. By all the gods, I'm alive. Whatever you and Yorin cast on me, it broke the curse. I feel heat course through my veins for the first time in years. It is finished. You performed well. Better than any other I would have found in Morthal. This is more... I believe so, yes. We may see lingering effects across the land, but the source has extinguished. When we flooded Freywin with our own life energy, the curse drowned. Curious that Maxton never considered such an approach. Freywin? Are you all right? I'd killed you. I would never leave you. It's over now. Rest. Then we shall return to town. You two have much to discuss.
Um, hello, stranger. Are you lost? If you're looking to rob me, I'm afraid I have nothing of value. I'm merely out here searching for my grandfather, Keldnir. Yes, he used to visit these ruins once or twice a year. On what he said were academic pilgrimages. He would be gone for a few days, then return looking tired but satisfied. It's been three weeks since we saw him last. This is Labyrinthian, an ancient city from the First Era. I don't know what my grandfather's interest in it is, but I've heard terrible sounds coming from within. You seem sturdy. Might I request your aid in looking for him? Thank you for accompanying me. I will feel better having someone by my side while I search for my grandfather. We should head inside whenever you're ready. Of course. Ask me anything you wish. It's the least I can do in exchange for your help. Grandfather Keldnir is a kind, gentle man. My parents died when I was very young, so he brought me with him to live in the temple. He taught me many things about the beauty of the world and the majesty of Cain. I admire him very much. I don't know. I want to believe that. But he's 83 years old, and his health has waned in the last few months. I'd already made peace with the idea that I may lose him soon, but I didn't think it would be in a place like this. No, no. I am a priestess of Kine. I weave a bit of clever magic to change my shape, but I would appreciate it if you kept that to yourself. I've been studying owls lately. They are so beautiful in flight. They are one of my favorite forms to take. No, many in my order would frown on it. We Nords have a fraught relationship with magic, but I feel such a sense of communion when I take flight, feeling the wind rustle through my feathers. It's as if Kain and I are dancing. <laughs> no, no, the rune god Juno bears the aspect of the owl, but I doubt Kain minds. Hawk or owl, my heart belongs to her.
Father, no! Grandfather, I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. May Kain carry his spirit to soften God. Did you find him? <gasps> never mentioned anything like that to me. Kind gift, Grandfather. Had I known, had anyone at the temple known, we would have aided you in this. Extremely. And if my Grandfather is dead, that means the seal is no longer protected. Someone might be trying to release Moroque as we speak. Are you with me still? We must seek out these warding flames and make sure they're lit. Thank you for taking on this new task. Had I known how dire the situation was, I would have brought more priests. We need to find the braziers, and quickly. They must be spread about the ruin. I just lost the person closest to me, and gained a responsibility that could determine the fate of all Skyrim. Forgive me if I seem distracted. There will be time to grieve for Grandfather later. For now, I must carry out his mission. Ah. Another extinguished flame. killed my grandfather must also be responsible for extinguishing these flames. 
There is one more flame to light. It must be within the ruin interior somewhere. You said it, my little Yon, owlet. What are you Your doing here? Was right. What's happened to you? You came. Uh, come closer. I do not have much time left. Kain's wards have been dismissed. If more okay's wrath breaks loose from this place, Skyrim will fall to ruin. You you must stop this from happening. Reignite the warding flame inside Morokay's final resting place. Once it is lit, you must seal the tomb itself. But be wary. We are not alone in here. The dragon priest did not orchestrate this himself. A necromancer. One with strength the likes of which I have never faced. But all his power will not help him if Moroke emerges from his tomb. The dragon priest will consume him. And then the world. I beg you, please, stop this from happening. Good. You must not let Moroke escape. Stop this madness before it can begin. If only I had been strong enough. And please. Keep yourself safe. I'm sure she will see this journey through to its end. She is the future. The protector. Rest in glory, Yana. I will finish what you and my grandfather started. I swear it! <laughs> Flame, it's wrong. We may be too late. Understand. We lit all of the flames, but this one glows blue as a dragger's heart. It shouldn't look like this. Did we miss something? Then they might be close to achieving their goal. We can't let that happen. We have to go to the source, Morake's tomb. 
That's where we will find the monster responsible for this. I know it. Let's keep moving.
done. My grandfather's so-called pilgrimage. It was a tale made up to explain all of this. To keep Morake sealed away. If only he would have told me sooner. I could have helped. I could have saved him and Yarnum. I will fulfill my grandfather's wish and take up the mantle he entrusted to me. Morake must never be allowed to escape this tomb. I learned a great deal watching you fight. When the time comes again, I will be ready. Thank you for everything. I think I still need some time to come to terms with everything. This was a great deal to take on at once. I feel tired. Older. No, even though I want to be. Anger would be easier. Maybe that will come later. Grief is a strange thing, isn't it? I know my grandfather was just trying to protect me for as long as he could. He always looked out for me. For a bit, yes. I think I need to be alone with my thoughts. I will find my way back safely enough. Kain is with me. May she always be with you. You're back. Wasn't certain I'd see you again. Well, have you talked to Eifjan Hauptbed? Along the northern coast, you say? Hmm, yes. That may narrow it down. Here, follow me inside. Never since it took my brother, I have tracked Pale Man sightings across Skyrim. See on this map. Yes, there and there.
For years, I have tracked the location of every Pale Man attack. Each one brought me closer to its lair. These last two confirm it. The Pale Man must be on the northern coast between Dragon Bridge and Solitude. It won't escape me again. A decade ago, I tracked down a cave where the Pale Man brought its kills. For days I waited. Eventually, I left to replenish supplies. When I returned, I saw loose rocks and an empty crawl space. The damn thing had watched me the whole time. It only attacks the unsuspecting or vulnerable, and I was armed to the teeth. It's no mere beast. It's smart. Cunning. But I have an idea on how we draw it out. Bait. Of an unusual variety. Uh, would you be willing to help out? Gods, no. I'm not willing to lose the only helpful person I've met in a decade. I need you to collect the ingredients and bring them to me on the northern coast. Then we'll draw out the creature and avenge its victims. The Pale Man likes to take people, so we'll make one for it, using Draugr parts treated with alchemy. This is where you come in. There is a crypt nearby. Dead Man's Respite. Chop up enough Draugr parts for a body, then meet me on the northern coast. The alchemical mixture I plan to use is necrotic, for lack of a better term. It only reacts with dead flesh. If we douse the living person with it, they die. But not before them. No one knows what makes those walking corpses move. But we do know they stop moving if you hack them up enough. We need intact, non-moving parts to make a body that will draw. Well, no. It's just the closest place I know to find them. Any Draugr will do, and if you know somewhere else to hunt them, their parts will work as well as any other. Just be careful. Those walking corpses look slow, but they are strong and mean. After I failed to draw the Pale Man out ten years ago, I talked to every hunter and reach witch who wouldn't slam the door in my face. I don't know how it works exactly, only that it's something the Hag Ravens created. Somehow the clever woman stole it away from them. When poured on the thing eats, doesn't it? We know it's smart enough to move lairs, avoid people who can kill it, and use snow. While you're out collecting the Draugr parts we need, I'll mix yeah.
This must be the Pale Man's cave. See the bones? Wolves don't make patterns like this. And I've seen this before. At its old lair. A location this remote is perfect to grab folks who are alone. Told you it was clever. Did you get the Draugr parts? You assemble them into a body that tempts the Pale Man. Take these sharp bones, jam them into the torso. Then, stick the arms, legs, and head onto them. Gruesome work, but it should hold. Pour on the pungent mixture I've made, and you have your bait. Last time I found a crude table deep within its lair. There were... remains with gnaw marks on them. I think that's where it eats. Search the lair for a similar table. Place the body on it, then pour on the mixture, and uh, hold your breath. If this doesn't work, then come get me. I am not letting this thing escape again. It won't be killing any more people. If we have to, I'll be the bait. But I'd like to avoid that for as long as possible. Despite everything, I'd like to live. Was it in there? Were you able to kill it? What happened in there? Then it's over. Shaw's bones, it's over. After so many years, that thing is really dead. I don't know how I can thank you. I lost everything and was ready to give it all up. But now, finally, justice. I don't... Wait. That ring. It can't be. It's Drendek's signet ring! Our mother gave it to him shortly before our hunting trip, when the Pale Man took Drendek. I always felt she blamed me for losing it, and for my brother, but now... These must be from all the other victims, trophies of the lives it snatched. That means it wasn't hunting for food. It was proud of what it had done. I need to return these to the families. I fear and how good. All of them deserve to know it's over. You've done more than enough for a broken old man. I'd like to see the faces of everyone when I tell them. It'll take a while with this limp, but I've got something to live for now. All I can offer you is this. Thank you. I'll search the lair for more trophies. Holding my brother's ring again feels like...
have more than I need, so I'll just use them. Over here, partner. <sighs> All I found were these Reachmen stalking the pass. Decided they'd rather die than talk, so I obliged. They don't look like they're from Ice Reach, but they are wearing the Coven's medallions. Anyway, did you find the lodge? Kilcraith? The Temple to Meridia? Why would the Ice Reach Coven target a local Daedra cult? Storms again. I saw the Coven conjure a massive storm on Ice Ridge. What did this storm do to the temple, and how do you know it was supernatural? Sounds like what they tried to do to the Scald King, but on a massive scale. I'll head back to Solitude and try again to warn High King Svargrim. You go to Kilcreath and see if the Coven left anything behind we can use as proof. I'll find you there. Kilcreath Temple lies to the west. Stop! A disaster has befallen Kilcreath Temple. It's good to see you again, but what are you doing here? Have you followed the Dragokin's plunder to this hole, too? I'm sorry, but you're too late. The Coven unleashed their Harrowstorm, and now vampires and Harrow fiends are everywhere. Still, meeting you again is fortuitous. We worked well together, and I could use your help tracking down the Dragokin plunder. The Draugakin were smuggling remains out of Bankerai and sending them here by way of Sentinel. The cargo arrived in solitude, but it wasn't clear who the shipments were for until I followed them here. They were destined for the Ice Reach Coven. I feared the two were related. I need to know more about what the Coven is doing with the remains from Bankerai. Studying their ritual might help determine how to prevent this from happening again. I could use your help to examine the strange pikes erected around the temple. Harrow fiends and vampires roam the area, making it difficult to get close. Hence the need for your assistance. You see, I'm not that confident in my combat prowess. The Ice Reach Coven performed a ritual that unleashed a harrow storm on the temple. It struck without warning and evaporated as quickly as it began. But in its wake, it left behind harrow fiends. Innocent priests and pilgrims transformed into monsters. That's what I heard the Ice Reach Coven call the storm that struck Kilcreath Temple. It's magical in nature. The result of some sort of ritual performed by the witches. I'm still investigating. But I think the Harrow Fiends are a byproduct of the storm. Yeah. 
An alchemical residue. That should prove useful. It's depleted. Just ordinary sticks and rope now. Interesting. Feel the lingering energy. That's Daedric, if I'm not mistaken. These depleted witch pikes expended a lot of power to summon the Harrowstorm. Now they're just ordinary sticks. But even in this state, they tell us much about the ritual that flowed through them. I'm sure now that the pikes play a significant role as focal points for the storm ritual. The prepared pikes are depleted as the ritual runs its course, but I sensed lingering energy, including a Daedric taint. And we found an intriguing residue. It's the remains of an alchemical poultice that was spread over the pikes. Smells like rotting fungus, doesn't it? With a little study, I should be able to identify each ingredient in its makeup. Then I can begin to understand the ritual. One other thing I want to check first. I noticed the pilgrims leading a cart away from me. <laughs> These depleted witch pikes expended a lot. I'm sure now that the pike... It's the remains of an alchemical pole. One other thing I want to check first. I noticed the pilgrims leading a cart away from the temple right before the storm hit. Coven members could have... Alive but unresponsive. Check the crates and see if they contain the smuggled items. Did you find anything of interest in the crate? I can't believe anyone knowing the involved would have let themselves be exposed to the storm. Perhaps the pilgrims were tricked into transporting the crate. Or maybe it was slipped into their cart. Yes, of course. Though I fear what we may find there, the temple was clearly at the center of the storm. Regardless, there's still a lot we don't know about the effects of this ritual. Observing the target area could offer new insights. These are temple priests and pilgrims. It seems the storm killed them. I'll need to perform more tests. But from what we've seen, I believe the storm affects mortals in three distinct ways. It kills them, transforms them into harrow fiends, and leaves them mindless. I suppose I'd say it harrowed those poor pilgrims. I want to learn more about the ritual and how it produces the Harrow Storms. And I need to confirm my theories about the storm's effects. I'll start by examining the residue from the Witch Pike to identify the components used to power the ritual. My alchemical equipment. It's extremely fragile, so I left it in my pack. 
I hid it among a copse of trees once I saw all the vampires and herophines. Once I retrieve it, I can find a place to begin my analysis. Yeah! That's close enough, Reach. Wait, wait! I'm not part of the coven! Looks like I made it back just in time. This place is crawling with vampires, and that one was about to make a meal out of you. House Ravenwatch. I've heard of them, but he's a long way from Rivenspire. Well, if you're willing to trust a vampire, I suppose I can too. I spotted a coven witch. If we hurry, we might be able to catch her. On the cliff overlooking the temple, calls herself Sister Embrit. I was going to rush her, but I wanted to make sure you hadn't run afoul of any of these monsters first. No offense, Fen. Come on, if we're lucky, the witch is still up there. Perhaps I could question the witch before you introduce her to your impressive axe blade? No time to talk. Not even Harold. It seems the ritual needs refinement. Kill her before she can summon another storm. Where? Go with your vampire friend. I'm gonna look around here. Do you see? These are the same as the urns smuggled from Bankarai. They didn't just shatter, they exploded. I can sense traces of magicka clinging to the shards that match the energy used in the storm ritual. These other fragments, though... All this rubble scattered around didn't just come from these urns. The texture and patterns are different. They appear to have used the funerary dust in the urns to summon the Harrow Storms. But I'm not sure what was inside the larger vessels. Look at the shape of the fragments. They come from a hollow receptacle of some sort. Something at least as tall as you. Perhaps larger. Just another piece of the puzzle. Maybe when I analyze the witch pike residue, an answer will suggest itself. Thank you, but no. I try to avoid large population centers. The temptation. You understand. I'll find some place nearby, but out of the way where I can set up my equipment and work undisturbed. I'll send word when I have something to report. I met a clever woman who lives in the bog near Morthal. Old Mjolens, a dying breed among the Nords. A practitioner of the old magic. The locals both admire and fear her. If anyone can help me untangle the coven's ritual, it's her. Mjolin's experience with the old ways and reach magic make her ideally suited to assist me in this endeavor. Western Skyrim consists of three holds. Hothengar, Hjalmarch, and Karthald. Morthal is the capital of Hjalmarch. It's located southeast. The Raven Watch has had to curtail rogue vampire clans and put down feral blood fiends on occasion. But I've never dealt with anything like this before. People turning into hero fiends or becoming mindless harrowed. It's a nightmare. Yes, but more research is required to confirm anything. Still, from what we observed here, it appears the hero storm produced three distinct results in those caught within it. It turned them into hero fiends or harrowed, or it simply killed them. So, 
What did your vampire friend discover? Reach witches summoning magical storms to create feral vampires? That's horrible, but to what purpose? Well, that's the next puzzle to solve. First, we need to get this information to the Queen. Here. This was for Brondel, but it's yours now. Queen Gerhild needs to hear what we discovered at Kill Creek Temple. Hopefully that will be enough for her to get us an audience with High King Spargrim. The Queen seemed reasonable. She'll believe us. As for Spargrim, who can tell? I haven't met the man, but everything I've heard describes him as prideful, arrogant, and hard-headed. Even with the Queen's help, there's no guarantee. I'd like to knock down the palace door, grab him by the throat, and shake him until he listens. That would probably start a war, though, and Joran specifically asked me to avoid that. For now, let's bring our evidence to Queen Gerhild. If there's anything else we need to discuss, let's get it out of the way now, before we return to Solitude. Hey, you and Fenorian came to that conclusion, not me. Still, it makes as much sense as anything. As to why, I have no idea. Its connection to vampires, though, that's troubling. We should keep Fen away until we get into Svargrim's good graces. A clever woman? Out here? Nords are extremely distrustful of magic. Especially Nords from Western Skyrim. I'm surprised the people of Morthal tolerate her presence. If anyone can help Fen figure out the Coven's ritual, though, it would be her. Our priority remains getting an audience with High King Svargrim. We need to convince him that the Ice Reach Coven is a threat to his kingdom, and get him to help us stop them. Let's return to Solitude and present our findings to the Queen. Clever men and women are Nords with an aptitude for magic, though most use the term to refer to practitioners of the old ways. They're rare. Not the usual adepts found at the Mages' Guild. Distrust of magic runs deep in Skyrim, especially out here. Could be that the elves our ancestors fought soured our taste for magic. Or maybe there weren't enough skalds singing about wizards going to Sovngarde. Might be that Nords just prefer their natural talents. Either way, magic isn't popular here. What do you want? The skies seem clearer to me. Uh, of course. 